Right, so I'm going to paint the miniatures to the, the colour scheme you can see there. Uh, I will list in the description all paints and brushes I use uh, throughout the process. Uh, and if you want to see a video how to assemble these guys, I'll also provide the link below because I've done one as well. So the uh, Cast Craft Jackals are listed in the Codex. And I chose these colour scheme purely because I like the look of it. It looks a bit uh, uh, winter camo-like, maybe a bit Russian inspired, the uniform for the winter. Um, and actually for the rest of my models, I actually based them up with like a snow base to sort of show that um, they're operating in a cold environment. But if you know anything about the lore of the Castcraft Jackals, uh, please provide them a comment below because I haven't been able to find any myself. Cool. So you can see here I've undercoated the models using the Crag Blue and the Citadel Spray. And as you can see in the background there, I'm actually doing a little production line of five models at a time to help speed things up. Um, so the first place to start is with Abaddon Black. I use Abaddon Black initially with my medium base brush to do his boots. I then drop down to a small base brush to do his armor, uh, any weapons, and also the bayonet scabbard as well on his back. The key point here is don't be afraid to start off with a bigger brush and move your way down to a small base brush. This will definitely save time on the long run. And also, if you're doing a Vox caster, do the uh, little camera part on the side of his head as well. And next is his belt. I simply use uh, Rhino Hide to pick that up with my small layer brush. And then next we'll be using Mournfang Brown to do any water bottles, spare magazines, uh, which you have as accessories on the side of their body. And next is using Wah Green to paint the grenades, either with a chap throwing it or on the side of their body as an accessory. Now lead belcher. Uh, use your uh, largest brush to start. If you're doing a vox cast, it's obviously got to do the antennas, uh, where the uh, the speaker is, um, obviously the bayonet, uh, the barrel of the weapon, the magazine, as well as of course the uh, the sights on the side of the weapon as well. Um, also the top of the water bottle if you use the water bottle, and also the bayonet if it's in the scabbard as well. Oh, and don't forget also the grenade ring, if you've put that in place there. The next major colour to use will be Bugman's Glow, uh, to use on um, any skin that's showing, obviously the hands and the face. Uh, you definitely drop down to probably your uh, medium and small brush to achieve this task. And actually, whilst you've got it out, you might as well do the highlighting or the edging of any of the, uh, the leather exposed areas, such as the magazine or water bottle. So again, just use your fine brush, use the edge of the brush, and pick out uh, any edges like in with that magazine there. And next, the left shoulder pad. Um, as per the codex, you'll see it's uh, actually painted red. But first, you've got to undercut it with cement white. The reason why I can't put the red over the top straight away is because it'll be too dark otherwise. So let that dry, obviously, with cement white, and then go over the left shoulder pad with a Mephiston red. So on to some detailed work using um, Hashat Copper and your smallest brush, for me being my uh, medium lay brush, pick out the eagle on his helmet, um, on his las gun, and on the Vox cast you'll see one on the back as well. Um, also on his uh, left breast pad or breast plate uh, there's also an eagle as well. Depending how the model is set up it could be hidden, but definitely if you can see even a little bit of it try to pick it out with your, uh, your brush as well. So with all the detailed work done, it's now time to do some very basic highlighting. So using a very smallest brush, you can see I'm starting here with Caddy and Flesh Tone and picking out his fingers, his thumbs as well, and I'll also do his nose and his cheekbones. Do the same thing also with uh, Mechanicus Standard Grey, and be able to pick out um, his, uh, his breastplate armour, the right shoulder pad, which is obviously black as well, as well as the bayonet scabbard on the back. Don't forget if you're doing a box caster you have to do the backpack as well because there are a lot of uh, straight edges there to be done. So use your uh, smallest brush and use the edge of the brush to pick out the sharp edges. The last bit of shading to do will be the uh, left shoulder pad which is in red and using Evil Sun's Scarlet you can then pick out the edges as per what I'm doing there to give it a really nice sort of finish. So now onto the camouflage scheme. So firstly starting with Corvus Black. Take your smallest brush, basically start applying the first part of the camouflage scheme. In the models in the background, which are hard to see, I actually tried several sort of uh, methods 
um, or approaches to doing this. I used uh, one which was using very small dots all over the model, one which was um, using sort of um, slashes moving left to right but in one consistent sort of way. And out of that experiment, I pretty much realized or reconfirmed what I knew that when you do camouflage uh, patterns to be very, very sporadic or more random than anything, don't try and follow a particular sort of format or pattern. Because a true camouflage scheme is trying to replicate nature. And obviously in nature, there is no pattern or structure to things. So when you do these, um, I use my smaller brush, my medium lay brush, to do dabs, um, lines left and right, up and down, um, just basically following no overall pattern. One small tip that will make it pop even more is any of the sort of uh, clothed areas which are, and are quite hard to get at. So particularly here will be, I guess, their belly in between the belt and also uh, the, the bottom of their armour. And actually at the back of their body as well, you'll see two pieces of cloth sticking through, which is almost uh, just, just there as I'm picking out there. So I think if you do those little like areas there with camouflage, it certainly gives the model a bit more life. Right, so the next stage of the uh, camouflage pattern is using uh, ceramic white, the same principle applying, uh, going in a random sort of approach to filling this out. Do try to put the white where the black isn't. Don't uh, cover the black with any of the white. Uh, so any areas which are still exposed uh, from the previous step, just put in some ceramic white. Again, try and pick out the spots which are harder to get at. So on his belly, the cloth parts on his back above the water bottles. And don't forget, of course, uh, the cloth collar he's wearing as well. So on to shades. And what I just showed there is a lesson I learned quite recently, which is to stick blue tack on the bottom of your shade bottle to secure it against the working surface that you're using. I recently spilled a shade bottle all over my uh, legs made a complete wet uh, mess and also wasted a pot of uh, shade. So I think if anything I take on this video, it's to stick blue tack on the bottom of your shade bottles to keep them upright and not knocked over because they're so tall and skinny. So using uh, Agrax Earth Shade, I'm going to cover all of the cloth parts of the model. So obviously his belt, uh, the water bottle, spare magazines, and all of his uniform. Uh, try not to cover um, any of the black parts or his flesh as well, as it'll be done in a moment. Now picking out his flesh um, on his face and his hands, use a Reichlin flesh shade with a smaller brush this time. And with this effort, you really see the uh, Cadian flesh tone highlighting did before start to really come to life. So the final shade to use is uh, Moon Oil. Um, in previous videos, I was calling this Nulun oil until my friend Ben identified this to me. So using uh, Nun oil, uh, pick out his boots, the bayonet scabbard, the bayonet handle if it's in the scabbard. Of course, uh, the weapon, uh, all the armour not covering the red. Um, and pay particular attention to uh, the Imperial Eagle that appears um, on his LAS gun. If you're doing a Vox caster as well, uh, of course, do the entire backpack in black um, and pick out the, um, the uh, silver details as well. Shades are a fantastic uh, tool to be using when you're first starting, and I've been using this for a long time, actually, because uh, they do a really good job picking out the detail, which you might have missed. And also, if you had any sort of um, overpaint areas, or mistakes, rather, they do a good job of sort of blocking them out. It's definitely on horde models like uh, Imperial Guardsmen, uh, shades are a must-have because it does it does help to sort of speed up the process and also make them still look very very good as well and there you go fantastic work uh, getting it done as you can see they look pretty good and close to uh, what appears in the codex uh, for the cast craft jackals so my key tips here when you're painting large amounts of models is to always paint in at least batches of five that way you can paint all the boots. Once the last one's dry, you can start working on something else in, in the first model and repeat that process over and over again. Uh, obviously it speeds up the process, but more importantly, it uh, will keep you sane. Because I'm up to now, I think, my fifth squad of uh, guardsmen, and it can be quite tiresome working through so many models. So do try to always work in batches. 
Second big tip is don't be afraid to use large brushes to start working your way down to the finer, smaller brushes. So in here, obviously use a large brush on their boots, on the uh, shoulder pads, obviously on the Vox Caster as well for the black, and then work your way through your smaller brushes to finish off the detail. And lastly, uh, camouflage paint, do have a go, be random, um, and most importantly, don't try to uh, create any sort of pattern. So if you enjoyed this video, please uh, press the like button and subscribe for more videos as I simple, paint and play Astra Militarum in Warmer 40,000. Talk to you next time. Bye.